Students entering the University of Minnesota's medical school were asked to recite a strange pledge during their white coat ceremony. This is back from August. Watch. We commit to uprooting the legacy and perpetuation of structural violence deeply embedded within the health care system. We recognize inequities built by past and present traumas rooted in white supremacy, colonialism, the gender binary, ableism, and all forms of oppression. As we enter this profession with opportunity for growth, we commit to promoting a culture of anti-racism. CRT in medical schools. How dangerous. Here to react, Fox News medical contributor Dr. Mark Siegel. Dr. Siegel, you just heard that, as did the audience. I think there was also a commitment in that, that recitation to honor indigenous medicine. And what has happened to the medical profession? That is a mess. Uh, let me tell you, well, indigenous medicine, honoring the history of that would be one thing. But if we start having to give out herbs rather than the latest technology, it might actually influence patient care. The other thing I wonder is, are they going to get rid of the white coat altogether because it's a white coat? I was going to wear one this morning, but I was afraid to wear it. I mean, they're going to change the color of it, I think. And they're also committed to healing our planet. Well, how about healing ourselves and healing our patients? The whole white coat ceremony was based on the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, and the whole idea of being humble and being kind and having integrity. All of that really matters, and the ceremony is really important. But when you start programming people of what they're supposed to say, and by the way, Will, there's no, there's no guarantee whatsoever that even if you mouth those words that you won't actually treat people properly, right? So you could mouth those words and be politically correct and follow critical race theory, but still be awful to people. And that's another thing. They're building a community of robots, not doctors. But I want to know how to take out an appendix, how to give antibiotics. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Right. And I think as a patient, I, I now have very earned skepticism as to whether or not my doctor is using sound logic and medicine to solve my very important health issue or, you know, trying to worry about whether or not he's going to get canceled or whether or not he's appropriately socially just. That's exactly right. You know, we're supposed to be studying medical textbooks. What's wrong with this patient? It's called a differential diagnosis. Am I giving the right treatment? Am I ordering the right tests? I even use humor sometimes. Mm -hmm. I make a joke. But if I'm politically correct, I'll never be able to make a, make a joke. I try to set my patient at their ease. We used to say we meet them where they live. Well, right. people live different places and they act a little differently. Some are farmers. Some are black people. Some are white people. I want to keep the white coat. Let's pledge this morning. Keep the white coat. Dr. Siegel, um, some months back, you appeared with me on the Will Kane podcast. We talked at length. We had some, we had a spirited debate about about the vaccine, um, its its risks, its rewards. Here we have a new situation in America where the CDC is going to put this on the vaccine schedule, which, by the way, then many states would march in lockstep and start requiring it for students to attend public or private school. Now, one governor, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, is saying that will not happen in Virginia. Governor Ron DeSantis said the same in Florida. Carrie Lake says if she's elected in Arizona, it will not happen. Why, why, how is, again, this is about the risk reward. Kids are under almost no risk from COVID. There is, however, some risk from the shot that seems medically and data supportedly clear. Why is the CDC doing this? Well, let me walk it back for a minute because I don't agree with all. I don't think this shot be, should be mandated in, in any state. And I think Governor Youngkin is right, and he's right to be getting ahead okay. of this, as is Governor DeSantis. I'm not in favor of mandating this shot at all. I think putting it on the list, remember, flu shot is on the list, and flu is mandated for school children in zero states. So just putting it on the list may be a way of leading to reimbursement from Medicaid and from other insurances. I don't want it to be a way of sending a signal, mandate this shot, because of the reasons you said. Because mm. most children do not get very sick from COVID. It's a very, very low risk. 
But I do think that the, the shot, too, has a very low risk, and some children are at more risk. Bottom line, Will, I want to have the option of using this vaccine for children. I want it to be the doctor, the patient, and, and the parent in a room, not the government there. I hope you're right. I hope that by putting it on the vaccine schedule, states do not just march in lockstep with the CDC recommendation. Dr. Siegel, thanks so much for joining us this morning. I hope so, too. All right. Thanks. By the way, thanks, I, went in, I went into this on the latest Will Came podcast. I laid out what you can do as a person, as a family, to exempt, perhaps, if your state does follow in lockstep with the CDC and where this all leads eventually. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.